Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today I'm going to be making a video about a couple more Ricoflex twin lens reflex cameras. Uh, in this case it's going to be a couple of the more unusual models. Uh, ones which I don't often come across here and ones which I don't frequently have for sale because they're a little bit harder to come by than the usual ones which I, uh, I acquire. Uh, I began selling these in my stores about a year or so ago, kind of on a whim. Uh, I used to see them all around here and I wasn't really interested in these rather simple cameras. I thought people would be more interested in the more sophisticated later Ricoflex cameras or Yashica or uh, Mamiya cameras. Uh, but to my surprise, these turned out to be quite popular. And uh, they're popular now probably for the same reason they were popular back when they were made in the 1950s. They are simple, inexpensive, and they take wonderful photographs. Uh, most of the cameras which I sell tend to be like the 6 and 7 or Holiday series, which are, I guess, the most common of the, the ones which I find here in Japan. But there were earlier versions, the 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, the 5 I haven't seen. Uh, and, of course, there's the Million, which is uh, one which I, I sell from time to time. And then we have the Super Ricoflex, and these are both examples of the Super. Though even though they are called the same thing, super, uh, they are somewhat different uh, in, in their operation and, uh, and a little bit in their appearance, though from a distance they look very much the same. Uh, the Super Ricoflex was a, a Ricoflex which was made uh, with a little bit more, I guess, more features than the standard Ricoflex camera, and both of these are uh, examples of, of, I guess, these uh, extra features. Let's go ahead and take a quick look first at the earlier version uh, of the Super Ricoflex. Do you see the kind of interesting script on the top here? Super Ricoflex. Uh, basically, this is a, a stamped steel box and the pieces of steel are folded and spot welded together uh, with a, uh, a very simple film back on the back and a very simple focusing device on the top and a gear-driven focusing uh, system uh, for the taking and viewing lens. Uh, all Ricoflex cameras feature a basic mechanical shutter, but uh, aside from this, you start to notice differences between the various models. Uh, the more uh, ordinary Ricoflex camera has what is called a combined charging and a release lever for the shutter. So to charge the shutter, you push this lever one way, and to take a photo, you push it the other way, and that releases the shutter. And this is a feature which is actually put on some of uh, Ricoh's more expensive uh, Ricoflex cameras, the Diamond series, with uh, uh, Ricoh-NAR or Rikonon lens. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, that's the most common system on this camera, but on, on these versions, the early Ricoflex, but on some of them, like the Super Ricoflex, this has a separate uh, shutter charging and release lever because this camera uses a somewhat more sophisticated shutter. Uh, this uses a, a, the Copal style shutter, which was also used in the old Yashica Flex cameras of the 1950s, like the Yashica Flex A. And it has the same basic range of speeds from B and one tenth of a second up to one three hundredth of a second. Uh, these are you know, quite simple in operation, and uh, if you are using one of these cameras and move on to a more sophisticated camera like the Yashica Flex or Ricoh Diamond, they operate pretty much the same as this. Another feature which sets this camera apart a little bit from the standard Ricoflex is the film winding knob. And if you look at it here, it's just a simple round knob with leatherette and a big screw in the center. But uh, this one, if you look closely, it has a series of numbers on the inside here. And these are actually for shooting with 35 millimeter film. And so the Super Ricoflex uh, had an option available where you could, uh, uh, let me open this here. You could remove this uh, film holder assembly in the back and replace it with one which used 35 millimeter film. And this allowed you to use 35 millimeter film in the camera. Those of you who are looking at this right now notice that there is a roll of film uh, loaded in this camera. And uh, yeah, it came like this, and I've kind of left it alone because I haven't serviced this camera yet. And I'm kind of on the wall what to do with this. This is like an old uh, late 1960s uh, roll of uh, Fujifilm panchromatic film. And uh, I'm wondering if it's a kind of a waste of time to try to develop it or not. So um, maybe I'll go ahead and try once I get some more chemicals. I, I plan to do sometime in the future a video on how to develop film in your home for these cameras. But in the meantime, I'll just leave it in here where it's safe. 
But as I said, you can use 35 millimeter in this camera if you find the appropriate uh, Ricoh adapter. And another interesting thing about these cameras is that they also had a feature which allowed you to shoot in different formats. There was actually a 6x4, 5 or 6x6 back for these. And if you replace the uh, film holder assembly on the inside with the 6x4, 5 version, you could use both formats in this camera. And one of the advantages to that is you get a few extra uh, exposures out of a roll of 120 film in this 6x4 format. Uh, another cool thing about the Super Ricoh Flex is it included a self-timer, which was something which uh, we didn't find in the other Ricoh Flex cameras. And uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. It has the same lens, the, the Ricoh Anastigmat uh, 8 centimeter f 3.5 lens which is actually a very good performing lens uh, very similar to the lenses you find in the old folding medium format cameras like the Olympus Flex or, or Olympus 6 excuse me or Mamiya 6 or a hundred other 6 series cameras which featured a, a split design lens and that is where the rear part of the lens remains fixed in the shutter and the front part of the lens moves in and out when, when focusing, whereas other cameras, the entire lens moves in and out. Now, this is kind of the system in which uh, you find on the old uh, Tessar lenses and the old, I guess, Zeiss Super Ecantas. It works really well. Uh, some people say that the uh, lenses where the entire assembly moves in and out work better. Uh, I can't really tell the difference. Uh, my eyes aren't that bad, and if I look, you know, I still haven't been able to tell the difference between, say, uh, something like uh, between a, a pearl and uh, something like the Olympus 6 with the good lens, just to see, you know, the differences in them. Uh, they, they work about the same for me. So that, let's go ahead and take a look at the newer. Uh, uh, Super Rico Flex. This one's even less common than this one. This is not a particularly common camera. I don't see a lot of these here. Uh, this one here is uh, much less common. And rather than saying Super Rico Flex and kind of like with a silk screened kind of treatment here on the top for the numbers, uh, this actually has raised letters. And this is kind of like a, a rolled or stamped plate on the top, much higher quality than we have in the regular uh, Ricoh Flex cameras. And this one has a few of the features which you find only on the higher end diamond cameras. And the most obvious one is there's a shutter release button on the bottom here. Though it's kind of on the opposite side than what it is on the other Ricoh Flex cameras where they move it here over onto the right side. Uh, it has the exact same lens as pretty much every other Ricoh Flex camera, the 8cm f3.5 Anastigmat uh, split style lens. But this one has a more modern shutter. Uh, this particular one has a full range shutter, like the later Copal style shutter with uh, B and 1 second up to 1 500th of a second, which makes this camera more suitable for uh, shooting, I guess, action shots. And uh, it's it's a pretty interesting uh, system in these cameras uh, for you know shooting in high speeds. They have something which Rico calls a sports finder, and you can identify that. This is available on a lot of the Rico Flex cameras, not all of them. It doesn't usually doesn't come on the uh, Rico Flex Six or the earlier Rico Flexes, but. You never know. The, pro the interesting thing about Ricoh in these cameras is there doesn't seem to be any rule. They just put a, a plate on the top of whatever they had plate they had handy and just put whatever else was on the bottom, uh, with the exception of a few, like a Ricoh Flex, uh, say a regular Ricoh Flex 7 camera, which is one of the most common ones. It can come with pretty much anything. It can come with a variety of different shutters uh, and things like that. And the the most common one is uh, the, the combined uh, a charging and release shutter with a maximum speed of one three hundredth of a second but some of them have a shutter like this one here the the, the copal a type shutter and then other ones have the even more advanced one which is this camera has now this one is as i said uh b in one second up to one five hundredth of a second and it also has the kind of uh, mx uh, switch here for uh, shooting with a flash and these two cameras uh, both have an interesting option and that is the PC sync socket for uh, using a flash. Some of these cameras came with the old Kodak style, uh, which is, makes it kind of difficult to use a more modern flash. You have to get a Kodak adapter. And then this camera, even though this has the, the more advanced shutter with the uh, higher speed, this has the old combined uh, shutter charging and shutter release. So it's really kind of cool that you can get these cameras and though they look the same, they all have these really, uh, I guess, interesting different features, or at least interesting to, you know, camera nuts like myself. 
A little bit difference in the controls here. This one, though, even though it has, I guess, the what we would say the more uh, high-end shutter, uh, this particular one doesn't come with a self-timer. So to use the ca this camera with a self-timer, you would need to use an um, adapter. And you would need to use, thread the adapter onto this shutter release button. It's threaded around the base here. And you can find these old adapters. They just screw on. And they, that allows you to use a cable release or a uh, mechanical uh, self-timer. Whereas this, I guess, older and more primitive Ricoflex actually has the flat you know, uh, shutter release or cable release built into the shutter. So you don't require any kind of adapter to use it. Just kind of interesting quirky things with these cameras. Another odd thing which I've mentioned in a previous video is how the sports finder works in these cameras. So it's kind of different and very uh, counterintuitive to what you might think would work well for a sports finder because when you're using the sports finder in this camera you can't actually see what you're taking a photo of. Uh, when you are using it, you have to fold up this uh, lens on the back here and if you look through that square in the back you'll see these lines lined up in the front. And these lines allow you to kind of see the background of what's behind you. And these were made for like, uh, you know, shooting pictures of kids playing baseball or soccer, you know, when, they, when they're kind of a little bit of a distance away and you've got the camera set at infinity. And what you do is you kind of block out the person in the center here. And if you can't see their arms and legs or feet or whatever in, in the line, holes or lines in the side, then it means they're kind of in the center of the picture. And it sounds really weird and unusual in the way it's designed, but it actually works quite well. And I was surprised taking one of these cameras out and kind of playing around with it and seeing that um, it, it probably forces you to pay better attention to what you're doing when you're using the sports finder compared to uh, cameras where it just has a, an, a door in the front and the simple opening in the back and you just kind of line up the rear uh, window with the center of the subject. Uh, this, I think, is actually a more accurate system, even though you can't actually see what you're shooting. So if you want to get them, your kids smiling while they're kicking the soccer ball, you won't be able to know the, notice with this one. But you'll at least be able to see, you know, keep them in the center of the frame. Uh, this particular Super Rico Flex, the later one, has a more a mechanical style counter which is a little bit difficult and uh, it causes people some headaches when they're trying to figure out at the first time, especially how to reset it and such. Uh, there's a reset button on the bottom here and if you're using the counter, it counts all the way up to, from uh, zero to 12. And then this one also has the 35 millimeter counter on the side. It slides out like that so you can pull out the uh, film holding mechanism on the inside, like so. Uh, when you're loading cameras with these, when I sell them, I always include a take-up spool, which is located here on the top. For loading the camera, you simply put the film in the back here, and you pull it over the top, feed it into the take-up spool, drop it like so, pull this out, the knob out, turn the knob until it's centered and starts winding the film. Uh, just keep turning it until the white arrow on the film is somewhere in the back here. With this camera, since it has this counter window, you don't have to be especially accurate uh, where the arrow is. As long as you see it, it's ready to go. Uh, close the door like so, open the window, and then simply keep winding and winding and winding until you get the number one here. And if you're going to be using the mechanical film counter, that's when you would reset it to go back to the number one. And you can either count using the mechanical film counter. It doesn't stop at each frame like the ones on the Ricoflex Diamond cameras are. Uh, it, it, for my, what I would recommend is just using this as a general guide because I'm, these don't tend to be very accurate. Where is the window on the back is a very accurate system. Uh, once you're to number one, you can simply charge the shutter. Of course, you'll have to charge the shutter, set your aperture with the ring uh, aperture, I guess, dial here, and the shutter speed dial, and take your photo. Not at all difficult to use. But anyway, uh, this video is getting up to around 15 minutes or so, a little bit longer than I planned it to be, so I'll go ahead and uh, cut it short here. Uh, this camera I've got already got listed uh, for sale on my Etsy store. Uh, this one here uh, still has a roll of film in it, still needs a little bit of work before I get it ready. Hopefully some, like, sometime next week it'll be ready to go. Uh, I plan to be making more videos. Those of you who've been uh, watching my channel have probably noticed that I've been putting up a new video every other day or so. And I'm going to try to uh, keep this up and try to keep the, you know, the content coming out regularly so uh, you can enjoy it. 
Uh, YouTube has been kind of encouraging me recently to try to post more videos and to keep them happy. I'll go ahead and do it for their sake. Uh, if you want to see these videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, of course, please hit the like button. That always helps us out here. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.